Okay, so this is, we finished the letter of Rabbi Schneir Zalman of Liad which was in defense of, from 1846, in defense of the Chassidim. And he basically, as I remember yesterday, he, um, you know, he said, you haven't consulted with us, you, and a lot of this is hearsay, um, it's, um, what else did he say? You know, it was, it was things like that. And uh, they had several points. Um, this is a letter from slightly earlier, from, uh, from 18, it seems to be from about 1876. Uh, I'm sorry, from 1776. Remember, 1772 was the beginning of the war against Chassidim. And this is a letter um, from Rabbi Eli Melech of Lezhensk, who's an early Chassidic rabbi. Uh, he's kind of on an equal level, Rabbi Schneer is on with the idea. They're both students of, I uh, think, of the of Rabbi Dovbeir, the Magad of Nezrich. And um, Rabbi El Nechlujent, the author of, popular, of a book that's well known among Chassidim. And in this, he's writing a letter to a student of his, and the student has several questions, but among them um, is. Uh, is why did we change the nusach? Why did we change the form of prayer uh, to Sfard uh, or to the, the, the Ariz form of prayer, the Arizal? Now, um, you know, it makes sense because the Arizal obviously was the greatest Kabbalist of his generation of, of probably the last thousand years. Um, and, um, you know, if he had a more Kabbalistic form of prayer, or if he felt that the Sephardic lands that their prayer service was more Kabbalistic, more true to Kabbalah, then obviously he would want that. Um, and the Hasidim took that on. Now, obviously, one of the central, if not the most, you know, usually the number one criticism of the Hasidim, as we've seen, is their change of the Nusach, their change from Ashkenaz to Sfard. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm, at face value, that's not the worst thing in the world. But, um, you know, obviously it, it signifies real change. I mean, custom in Judaism is very powerful. You can't just, you know, change things. So, so I think it's, you know, and, and so I think it's interesting, the question of the Hasidim, how do they defend themselves? Because that's a legitimate criticism. I mean, why should they change the Nusach? I mean, that's, um, you know, why should they change the language of prayer, even though they're changing it to something that exists already? So um, in this area, um, I was asked by my student, uh, and he said, why is it that we have changed the language of the, the, for, the form of prayer, the Nusach? And, um, and he writes, uh, the Beit Yosef, which is Rabbi Yosef Cairo, that was Rabbi Yosef Cairo, who's the author of the Shulchan Aruch, his earlier book than that, or the precursor of Shulchan Aruch that he wrote, is a commentary on an earlier Shulchan Aruch, commentary on the Tur Shulchan Aruch. Um, and he writes, He 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 actually brings these changes in prayer. He writes, you know, it's a, it, this was his form of prayer that we're using. And he says, actually, it was after that that Rabbi Moshe Isserlis, who lives about 50 years later and who's an Ashkenazi, um, and he's also a very well-known decider of Jewish law. So it sounds like what he's saying is that actually it was the Ashkenazim who changed it. And um, well, I'm not sure. What he might be saying is that the Beit Yosef's changes, Beit Yosef was a Sephardi, Rabbi Yosef Cairo, uh, and also he was close to the Ari, I mean, he, he, the Ari, of course, is also a Sephardi Rebbe, Isaac Luria. Um, I think what he's saying maybe is that the changes of the Beit Yosef that were more Kabbalistic should not have been made, that they were too, um, they were too mystical. Um, and therefore Ashkenaz took them, 
remove them. But among these chassidim, like Rabbi Yosef Cairo and the Ari, um, obviously when the Ramah, Rabbi Moshe Israel, said that this is too mystical, these changes, he didn't mean it for those rabbis. Um, um, he, he did not mean when Rabbi, when Rabbi Moshe Israel, the Ashkenazi, says, you know, don't make these changes, um, he didn't mean it for the rabbis. And then he says, and both are the words of God. Uh, that, um, you know, whether you're using Nusach Ashkenaz and Nusach Sfard, he says both are legitimate. And I think what he's saying is that Sfard was a change. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. I would have thought that Sfard was older. Um, but it sounds like he's saying that the changes that Rabbi Isaac Luria made, the Ari, which were more Kabbalistic, that Rabbi Yosef Cairo adds to them or sticks with them. And that's what the Chassidim are using. So if you'll say, well, you know, I'm saying that he only made those changes for the rabbis, so why are we all using it? It's interesting. In another place, also, Rabbi, the same rabbi who's writing here says that indeed these Kabbalistic changes to prayer are really only for individuals, not for everybody. So he says, okay, you're going to ask me why we've made it popular for everybody, all the chassidim. So he says, my answer is that we see that when the Jewish people sing at the sea, it says they believed in God and in Moses his servant. Um, so why, he says, does the Torah have to say that the Jewish people believed in Moses' his servant? They believed in God, isn't that enough? Then obviously, if God made Moses the servant, they're going to believe in Moses. So why does it have to separately say that they believed in Moshe? The Torah is teaching us something great, uh, um, that, that um, when God took us out of Egypt and wanted to give us the Torah, uh, that these things that we went through before receiving the Torah, like the splitting of the sea, was there to purify us. And Moshe um, was on a very high level, like a prophet, and he went up and he brought down the Torah. And the whole Jewish people were not able to be on the status of Moshe, to receive the Torah. Uh, but because they believed in Moshe and they connected themselves to Moshe and his Ruach HaKodesh, his spirituality, his, his, his Holy Spirit was put upon them it was as if they were, at least momentarily, to receive the Torah, like on the level of Moses. Uh, and if you don't believe that, And he says, I saw an explanation that um, okay. and he says, we see in the books of Musser that um, 
that people do say you should use the Nusach of the Beit Yosef, the prayer service of Beit Yosef, which has these Kabbalistic things in it. So I think what he's saying is that, in a sense, the Chassidim are like, because the Chassidim see their teachers as, as Moses, as somebody who's a bit of an intercessor, therefore, even though it's true, not everybody's on the level to use this more Kabbalistic form of prayer, um, because Hasidim see their teachers, not just as teachers, but as you know, as like in the place of Moshe, the person who helps you to be an intercessor between you and God. So therefore, it's as if just like the Jewish people were raised up to Moses' level, so to the Hasidim are raised up to the level of the Rebbe. Um, and therefore, even though the more Kabbalistic form of prayer, uh, now the Jews is very similar to regular Nusach Sfard, I think, but um, Maybe Nisach Sfard really comes from, I thought I went back much further, but maybe it really comes from the Beit Yosef. Maybe he really did make changes. He was part of this group with our Rizal of Kabbalists. Uh, so let's figure out what's, what's older. Is it Ashkenaz or Sfard? You would have thought that Sfard is older because Jews came from Sephardic lands and went to Eastern Europe in around the 10 hundreds. But um, it sounds here like the language of Sephardic prayer was changed in the early 1500s or there were these Kabbalistic passages added. Now, of course, he's not defending to the Misnagdim here. He's just writing to a student of his. That's his, that's his answer. Uh, it's, it's not a great answer because it's, it, it would be a hard answer to give to the non-Hasidim because they would probably disagree with the precedent. But it does highlight one of the big differences between Hasidim and non-Hasidim, which is that non-Hasidim see their teachers as intellectual teachers. And it's not that they're not a, a master, also they are but they're not an intercessor. Whereas among Hasidim, it seems like even very early, there was a sense of the Rebbe as an intercessor, um, you know, and uh, I mean, the average Jew before that didn't need an intercessor. I mean, the average Jew before that just prayed, you know, that was, um, but Hasidim definitely have a different image of the the Rebbe. Although it's interesting, that's not one of the early criticisms of the Hasidim, whereas changing the language of prayer is. So he's saying, you know, we're relying basically on the, on the author of the Shulchan Aruch, Rabbi Yosef Cairo, for these changes. And, um, and that because of the way Hasidim is structured, it can be for everybody. Interesting. Um, I'll have to try and get a sense of, you know, more about the change of prayer. Uh, what, you know, which was really earlier? And did Rabbi Yosef Cairo actually change prayer? Sorry, I was a little bit unclear on that. But um, let me stop there and I'm going to um, find another letter for us to do, uh, another defensive letter for us to do. All right, um, end us there. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.